And uh, kicking things off, we got the brand new Ant-Man trailer this week. We did, and it went a little further into tell us, like, what the fuck's happening in the film. Yeah, I mean, we probably got more story in this than we normally get in, you know, your average Marvel trailer here. They basically lay out for you, hey, this is what Scott Lang's character journey is going to be for this movie. Yeah, and it's uh, a little bit darker than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, more complex and a lot darker than the Ant-Man movies usually do. It's funny, in the past, you know, Ant-Man 1, Ant-Man and Wasp, they were kind of like these silly Silver Age blow-offs for, like, the bigger mm-hmm. Avengers movies. Where it's like, and here's an Ant-Man movie that's kind of more contained, and, you know, you don't got to deal with Thanos and Stones and mm-hmm. the end of the world or anything. This one basically says from the jump, no, this is going to be the most serious, high-stakes Ant-Man movie to date. Yeah, well, uh, Pey- Peyton Reed actually said that. He said he... he- he's sick of being the palate cleansers after like the big (laughs) Avengers film. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna write that with this movie. And it makes sense because this is, it it dawned on me the other day. This is the first film we're getting where the big bad of the phases, which is Kang is actually going to appear and be a actual threat in a movie before he's a big one. Like Thanos did appear in guardians of the galaxy, but he was, he sat down for, all his scenes and did nothing I mean, that, that was the joke right that Thanos yeah. literally just sat in a chair yeah. for a couple years yeah and they're they're fixing that by having kang actually be a villain in a movie before his big appearance yeah. in kang dynasty and for a lot of people i'm imagining this is the first time they're seeing mm-hmm. kang because i get the distinct feeling that a lot of the people who go see the movies don't actually watch the shows mm-hmm. or as well that some people are probably going to be confused and not realize that he is just a variant of the guy from Loki. Loki. They'll think it as, oh, they've recast him or something. It's going to be the dark hold all over again, where people forget how the show actually ended. Mm -hmm. Cause it's been such a long time, but yeah, man, Jonathan majors, I know I've said it before, but it bears repeating what a fucking beast. Just even in the trailers, the Mm. grabby toss he is giving to this role he is not phoning it in and the costume looks amazing the costume looks fan- like straight out of the comics it looks wonderfully comic accurate and i love how they solve the problem of being like well he can't have blue skin all the time right now nah, man it's the helmet it's like a visor screen that when he puts it on it looks like he's blue yeah I- i'm glad they actually put that in the trailer since i know obviously a lot of people are going to be complaining that oh why isn't he actually blue like we as comic fans know he's not actually a blue man yeah it's a mask yeah it's always been a mask (laughs) yeah but it's a great touch and it wasn't just kang we got in this our cup runneth over with villains we actually got our first very 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 brief uh glimpse of what modok is going to be we knew modok was going to be in it but this is the first time the trailers have actually said to the general public yeah modok's going to be here well and not only that a lot of people assumed because uh, I think it was like the Comic Con trailer or some some trailer that was behind closed doors only showed Modok in an armored form, and mm. people thought, oh, they're not doing the big head; he's just going to be like armored and everything. And it looks like they they've got that form plus the more classic yeah. giant he- floating head with little arms and everything. And I like that it's Corey Stoll again. <laughs> that's very fun that they brought him back in another yeah. role. That's really cool. Yeah, that's cool. I like that a lot. I like when they allow actors to come back in uh, new well, roles well, and think, everything. I think he's still playing Darren Cross from... Oh, first... is he really? Yeah, I think the whole deal is is that when when he shrunk down in that first film, like, died, quote-unquote, he shrunk down to an atomic size uh... and is literally just, like, a head and small arms and legs. That, that makes sense. Also, man, talk about, you know, combining characters together. So Darren Cross is Darren Cross... And he's Yellow Jacket, and he's Modoc now. He's actually three characters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's really fun that he gets to be all these. And he was also weirdly kind of Ultron in that first one, too, because he's the monster that Hank Pym yeah, invented. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, holy shit. <laughs> and, and they had, like, this weird, like, you know, father-son thing where it's like, you know, why didn't you love me, Dad? You know, I'm only this way because, you know, you're kind of a shitty person and everything. I wonder, I wonder if they'll bring that back, actually, their relationship. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. I hope so, too. Uh, Obviously, too, you know, we mentioned the character journey that uh, Scott Lang is going on, and they straight up say it in the trailer, you know, Scott Lang feels bad about all the time he lost with his daughter because of the blip and everything, and because, you know, when the whole universe got messed up and it's time, it's time he can't get back 
unless you're Kang the Conqueror and you are literally a master of time who is able mm-hmm. to bend it to your whim. Yeah, so the idea is that he he needs pin particles to power some machine that will allow him to travel not just through time but to any anywhere and any place in time. Right. Yeah. Very Kang. Yeah. So as I imagine a, he's using that, he's dangling that as like, you could go back and spend time with your daughter and everything. He's being the devil on his shoulder. And I like mm-hmm. that because, you know, Scott's story is that of an ex-con who's trying to, you know, go on the straight and narrow and not reoffend. And this basically mm-hmm. is kind of that moment of, will you take the easy way out? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like it. I like it a lot. Captain Kuhn helping us out in the chat. Modok looks stupid and I love it. Yes, that's how yeah. it should always be. Yeah. He looks stupid I, just the way God intended. Yeah, I just love they just went for it. And yeah, he's just the giant head, the floating head. It's great. He's a big, silly head. I wonder if uh, Stoll's going to do a voice, because whenever I think of Modok, I always think of him talking like this. <laughs> they just get Patton Oswalt to voice him. <laughs> just get him back. Oh, God, yeah. Remember that Patton Oswalt show? <laughs> I watched a little of it. I like watched the first four episodes, and I'm like, this is all right, and then I never finished it. Well, I think it got cancelled anyway, so... It, it did, but I, like, watched the first four episodes and then never finished the whole thing. Ironically, I watched all of that Hitmonkey show. I thought the Hitmonkey show was actually better. <laughs> like, shockingly, where it actually mm-hmm. told, like, a pretty adult, pretty nuanced story about revenge and, you know, the circles of death and everything. Yeah, right. It was shockingly well done, and also, you know, fucking Ted Lasso was in it. No, that's, uh, yeah, Jason Sudeikis is great. Yeah, he was the guy, and, like, again, was not phoning it in, was actually giving it 110. Nice. But what I really like about this Ant-Man trailer, it just warms my heart to see so many people who don't normally give a shit about Ant-Man and Scott Lang, who I think we can agree is always one of our favorite, you know, lower-tier Marvel characters, mm-hmm. and it's great to see just regular Joe and Jane popcorn being like, wow, can't wait to see that Ant-Man. It's going to look great. I... I... When I watched the trailer as well, I, I also felt like I did when I when I'd watched movies that were like like pre pre Endgame Marvel movies. Mm, that that yes. same feel. Whereas like I I liked a lot of the stuff that happened, like you know Thor, Love and Thunder, all those all mm, those same. movies. I liked them, but like there was something about this that feels like okay, we're going back to back to what what it was before Endgame sort of feel. <laughs> You're not the only one I've heard uh, echo that sentiment either. Mm. And again, much like you, I'm like, yeah, I liked Love and Thunder. I liked Eternals. I liked all these weird experimental movies and all these weird experimental swings they're taking. But yeah, in many ways, it does feel like the message they're trying to send with Quantum Mania is that this is a return to form, Mm -hmm. which I say finger quotes because I don't ever think they lost anything. I don't think Mm. you lose something by experimenting. No, no, not at all. And I'm so happy those other things exist. And I'm happy that in this post-Endgame world, they can actually really hold up Ant-Man and be like, yeah, you know, one of the original Avengers, everyone. Wink, wink. Yeah, yeah, it's it's great. And I like that they're using him as well to kick off the Kang Dynasty. Because yeah. that, that, that's the tagline for the film, the, the beginning yep. of a dynasty. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I this think that's our, pretty cool. Yeah, this is our new Infinity Quest or whatever, the Kang Dynasty. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Man, I still can't believe that Kang is the new hot shit now, because we had said that forever, where it's like, well, when they're done Thanos, where should they go next, and what villains should they do next? <laughs> yeah, fucking Kang, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, Kang's a good one, because, you know, he's an Avengers villain, and he is, you know, deeply tied to the Iron Man family of characters, and deeply tied to the Fantastic Four family of characters. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I guess at what point do we say, well, okay, who do they do after Kang? <laughs> Galactus or someone. You know what? Yeah, I guess by that point, the Fantastic Four will be in, and they can do Galactus, and they can do frickin' Apocalypse, and Doctor Doom, and mm-hmm. all these other characters will be open now. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing who they who they will do after Kang, because, like, yeah, where, where do you go? You got Thanos, you got, you got Kang. I guess maybe they could redo Ultron. Yeah, again, Ultron could very much be mm-hmm. a phase-centric villain. You know, do him and do the Annihilation Wave. Ooh, yeah, make him like a cosmic villain instead of just like normal Earth Avengers, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it'd be like, when I died, I uploaded my brain to a passing spaceship, and it brought me <laughs> into the friggin' cancer zone or whatever, and now <laughs> I, me and the Annihilation Wave are coming to kick your ass. Actually, no, because here's the thing. They did bring Ultron back. They brought him back for the cruise show. Yeah, they did, and Ant-Man fought him in that. <laughs> and Ant-Man, which that, like, mm, is a fan. I'm like, I want to see that, though, but I don't want to have to pay to go on the Disney Wish because <laughs> Ultron is so deeply tied to Pym and the Ant-Man family. Ultron always should have been one of those villains. Uh, that, uh, maybe maybe they can do like a, a, a movie adaptation of that. Just just because they it technically somewhere. had like a whole Avengers team. They had like Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, I Sam know. Wilson's Captain America. And... I want to see that. Well, you know, here's the thing: either you know, I'll save the money and go on the cruise, or if they do this like they do medieval times, where they'll like change the story every couple of years and they'll write a new one so people have a reason to come back. Just put that one on the app, guys. You can put that one on the app. You have an app. <laughs> Just put the cruise show on the app. If I can watch Disney parades on your app, then let me watch the goddamn Ultra <laughs> Ant Man dinner theater experience. Yeah, is the is the cruise canon to Quantum Mania? <laughs> uh, exactly, because if it is, then I have to see it and I can write it off as work. <laughs> just just say it is someone so I can write it off as work. <laughs> Man, that Disney Wish cruise ship looks so fucking sick. Have you seen it? I have, yeah. It looks pretty cool. Looks so goddamn sick. They have a Captain Hook pirate-themed barber shop where if you're older than 18, they'll give you a shot of booze with your haircut. <laughs> That's all I want, to be on the sea and have a haircut and have a shot of booze. And yes, I don't drink, but I want to do it anyway, just to <laughs> say I did. <laughs> There's also, like, barbecue. You can get barbecue 24 hours a day while nice, at sea. Nice, nice. I, uh, I, they say it's unlimited, but I would I would make sure to stretch, you know. the. You would test uh, those limits, yeah. <laughs> I would test those limits. It would be like that episode of Simpsons where it's like, now, my good sir, your honor, this man did not have all he could eat. <laughs> he saw that as an open challenge, and that's your fault. <laughs> They'll have to put up a sign that says, all you can eat within reason. Thanks a lot, Joel. He knows who <laughs> <it> is. <laughs>